on board the Carmichael. Bravo for recklessly wedging me through. Would you like a listing of what was scraped off me this time? Nah. Very good. Could you maybe help me out of this cobbled together Frankenstein suit? Sure. Hold up there, Hansy. Oh, it's not sexual. Your boobs are just so huge. No, they're not. I could wear one as a helmet. You have impulse control issues. Yes, I do. But this is more of an obsessive fixation thing. According to my file, I was diagnosed with both. Were we just hit? Uh, no. It seems some of the parts that make for smooth space travel might have been more sticky-outy from the hull than you'd expect. Than you'd expect? Hey, we both had a role to play in this. What did I do? You shorted their computer. I reconfigured the operating system. The hardware was left as I found it. I thought you'd like to know, Marshall. The warp drive is unlocked. Thank you, Carmichael. What was the delay? Instar was hesitant to do so. Why? Instar believes you are a reckless lunatic who shouldn't own anything nice. This Instar is not wrong. As a precaution, I've been backed up. Is that all? Yep, thanks. Oh. I better give Bronson a call and let him know that there's been a change in plans. You're contacting him on a handheld? Where is this Bronson person? I don't know. The thing about space is that there is a lot of it. But you're calling him on a handheld! Is this in real time? Is your handheld quantumly entangled? I used to use adorable robots to deliver critically important messages, but actually calling people is a way more efficient use of time. Initially, I took part in some beta testing of a tachyonic phone. Tachyons? Particles that travel faster than light? Yeah, those. I kept receiving replies to my messages prior to me sending them. That messed me up. So I went with the old reliable entanglement. It routed through a hub on my world. A quantum entangled handheld? I've never heard of such a thing. I didn't know it was possible. Plain old normal arrays are so hugely expensive to set up, most folks end up buying them used. It's the impossibility that makes it pricey. I can't imagine the cost. About 90 bazillion dollars. Does that include data? Alexandra? There's been a small delay. I had to rescue a priestess-to-be from an illegal drug lab that is likely being sheltered by some rogue peeps in your organization so that they can produce a super-hallucinogenic drug in hopes of replicating Fiddleheads. This is Fiddlehead. Hi. A pleasure to meet you. In hopes of replicating her ability to navigate interdimensionally, I'm going to drop her off at Grand Dam. To not join a cult. Hold on. Okay, you're on speaker. We see. Her name is Fiddlehead, and she's an interdimensional navigator? Yes, that is her name. And yes, interdimensional navigation is part of her skill set. Fiddlehead's stoner brain is the template for the navigation system on the Invictus. Uh, Sorry, Fiddlehead. I didn't mean to relegate you to the sidelines. I'm Bronson Rice, and this is Lieutenant Jane Parker. Alexandra was on her way to meet with us at the BGO to discuss the recent return of the Invictus and its possible recovery. This is all too coincidental. Coincidences happen a lot in my life. What's the coincidence here? Me too. I too. You too? No, to be grammatically correct, Fiddlehead should have said I too. This me too thing is a pet peeve of mine. So... No or yes to you too. As in, she should have said, I too experience a lot of coincidences. How would I know if she too experiences a lot of coincidences? Uh, to save time, we can meet you both at Grand Dam. The situation with the binary system may have escalated. Escalated? How can a rogue binary system ripping up the galaxy escalate? Oh boy. Well, off the top of my head... Why are we talking about this? Because a rogue binary system is ripping its way through the galaxy. That explains what happened with the base. Sort of does. I get it. Coincidentally, you just happened to be around to rescue me. And you did so while coincidentally on a mission to talk about the Invictus, which 
coincidentally just happens to use my brain as the template for the navigation system. Exactly. It all seems rather implausible. By escalated, I was referring to the fact that it appears as if the arrival of the binary system might be planned. We don't know by whom or why. Do you know how? How it appeared? No. Where? Do you know where it first appeared? Not precisely. How about when it first appeared? Uh, no. But you do know what appeared. That's a little vague, too. It might be a sentient being, or a ship carrying sentient beings, or a probe. We don't know. You do not know who, what, why, where, when, or how. Bronson, my man, I suggest you report that hijinks ensued, sign your name, and put this puppy to bed. Fiddlehead, the navigation and operating system are based on your brain? As in how it functions? It can mimic responses to scenarios that I have already been exposed to. But it can't process like my interconnected, hyperconscious mind. So it would be stymied by any situation that is entirely new. Do you have any association with the ship's operating system? I built it. You built it? Can you prove any of what you're saying? Prove to you? No. Not to you, any of you. You're all too... Stupid? I'm a PhD candidate. In grammar? I was thinking too unfamiliar with interdimensional physics. Bronson, if we have the architect right here, is there really any reason to go to Corfu? Corfu? I recently maybe escaped from there. You maybe escaped? I'm not entirely sure that I was being held captive, so I may really have merely left. What were you doing there? Programming. Statistical modeling and interdimensional research. Were you being paid? That was one of the things pointed out to me. How did you find yourself at Corfu in the first place? That would kind of tell you if you were a prisoner. (laughs) Corfu is the easy part. It's how I found myself in the hospital and anything prior, which is vague. Uh, Let's assume that Fiddlehead is everything she says she is. Unless she is carrying a copy of the protocol on her, we're at square one. She is not. I guess we'll be seeing you two at Evermore. Chat at you later. Until then. You entering coordinates? Yep. Warp has always fascinated me. I'd love to learn about the real world mechanics behind the theory. What's involved to encase a ship in a warp bubble? in which the ship itself remains static while space compresses in front of it while expanding behind it. Oh, humanity has been fundamentally and irrevocably changed by the advent of warp drive. It kind of had Mormons scrambling for a little bit. I've got it down. What down? The mechanics involved. I've got it down. Warp drive? Really? You know how it all comes together? Yeah. Could you teach me? We can at least get started. We have a little time to kill on the trip, don't we? Yes, we do. This will be fascinating! Push that. Class dismissed. Go ahead. I've already laid in the coordinates. Go ahead. And there you go. We're off. Thank you. That was concisely informative. Yeah, sure. No sweat. You know, encourage the curious mind, blah blah. Hmm. Hmm? That was way too easy. What was? Picking you up. There is always, and I mean always, a lot more involved when I rescue a priestess-to-be. There is a storm of hardcore butt-kicking brewing. No, there isn't. Why would you say that? Experience. The fact that there wasn't enough destruction, or anarchy, or even bedlam. It ain't over. Bedlam? We had an embarrassment of riches when it came to bedlam. People scrambling everywhere. I remind you that the base was in self-destruct mode. It's all a little too flat. What you're labeling as flat is really a testament to your efficiency. No, that's not what I mean. I mean more stuff has to blow up. Must it, though? The universe will have its pound of flesh. Pound of flesh? What does that mean? What does it sound like it means? A sick method of payment involving flesh. 
bingo. What's bingo? The 23rd century has been a real idiomatic dry patch. The universe wants big payment in exchange for a future priestess being rescued. Is that really a given? That seems like an arbitrary notion. One rescue, one lot's going down. Was I truly rescued, though? When you think about it, is rescue the appropriate term? You said it yourself. I was picked up. We've got company, and they're masking their call sign. Why? Usually pirates do that. In this case, though, it's a Lair's class light frigate. I strongly suspect it's worse than pirates. There's a fake pirate's vibe. The ship is too new and cutting edge. I suspect this means that you did escape from Corfu, and that they super duper want you back, and that you've been lojacked. Lojacked? As in for tracking a stolen vehicle? I, I, I'm not a vehicle! No, I'd say more like the family dog. After Petty's righteous purge of 2167, all household pets were chipped for their safety in a Glitterati-funded free chip program. Is that where any government-regulated quantum entanglement array is required by law to transmit the location of such a chip through a central hub at the BGO to the owner? Yep. I've been chipped like the family dog and Carmichael ratted me out. That's my take on it. It's kind of flattering when you think about it. Flattering? It's creepy. Shouldn't we be making a run for it? Adorable. Carmichael, can you outrun the frigate? I know it's not what you want to hear, and I really feel terrible telling you this, but no, I cannot. Sorry. And Carmichael, how would your armored plating stand up to an artillery barrage from the frigate? Gosh, I am so sorry for how this is unfolding. Once again, many apologies. Mortal fire would rip through me like- Alright, I get it. Any more good news? Since you asked, what is not commonly known is that the Glitterati-backed petty death squads roam the galaxy scanning for those chips. Death squads? That's twisted. They're animal rights activists. Who believe that domesticated animals are an abomination and must all be euthanized. It seems that Sable is slaughter only if the Sable in question is not domesticated and someone other than Petty does the killing. Like my Henry used to say, to be truly evil, you must first be self-righteous. Uh, but didn't you just say that the Glitterati funded the chip program? For the safety of the animals they love. They are a huge fan of pets. But they're also backing Petty death squads. They love causes, especially ones that involve animals. Glitterati are head cases. I'm safe though, right? These death squads would notice that I'm a human being. Isn't a human being the most domesticated animal of all? That's how you console me. Fail. You'll be fine. Stay away from windows until we get the chip out of you. Sorry to interrupt. My warp field is being destabilized. We will be dropping out of warp in five minutes. Do something. Don't worry. I've got a plan. The universe will be getting its pound of flesh, though. Mm, about this flesh, tit for tat equation, if it must be paid, does it need to be all at once? Mind standing up for a sec? Why? Humor me. Fine, but this better be building to an escape. We've dropped out of warp. What are you doing? Oh, and my sublight drive has been shot. Super debilitating. That was the little shakeup. Sorry about that. I'm estimating. I'm usually pretty good at this. At what? Gently knocking people unconscious. Uh, gently what? Oh, heck no! You're- Arriving at Evermore. We are entering Gondam's exosphere and should be landing at the Temple of Evermore shortly. Any final thoughts? It's not a tip, but is worth mentioning. Grand Dam just might be the safest place in the galaxy. I was thinking more along the lines of how to deal with the coven. Ah, not really, I'm afraid. Besides being women, they collectively have little in common except for their fierce loyalty toward each other. As a group, they are not secretive, but they can be reticent. Switching over to atmospheric flight, the temple has given clearance. We'll be landing shortly. The ramp has been extended, clear for debarking. 
Splendid. Thank you. It's a pleasure, sir. Watch your step, ma'am. Mr. Rice, Lieutenant Parker, welcome to the Temple of Evermore. I am Priestess Allie. Pleasure to meet you. I assume that Alexandra informed you why Jane and I have come. It's never safe to assume anything when it comes to the goddess. Is that insane skyscraper actually going to be a statue of Alexandra? It is. The structure is enormous. It is not an idol. It will simply serve as a reminder of who brought us all here. Mr. Rice, although the goddess was sparse with the details, we do have a decent understanding of your purpose for coming to Evermore. Perhaps you can tell me what you know, and I can fill in the gaps. Wonderful. Let's take this inside, shall we? Please, have a seat. Your office doesn't seem in line with the European Middle Ages aesthetic. It's not my office. This is a communal space. And no, it isn't. Chairs, couch, wherever you like. We believe that the Invictus somehow caused the binary system to come into the universe. It was acting more as a sexton than providing a corridor. Given the scant information, our current conjecture is that there are two possibilities. The first being the Invictus stayed on course, but the course changed. The course changed? I don't understand. In the simplest terms, as a result of random overwriting of the Akashic records, the infinite universes change in relative position to each other. We witness the in-universe impact of such glitches as the Mandela Effect. The Akashic Records? The Akashic Chronicle is a compendium of all events, thoughts, words, emotions, and intent ever to have occurred in the past, present, or future, which is believed to be encoded in a non-physical plane of existence. <laughs> Mysticism. The second possibility is that the course stayed reliably constant, and it was the Invictus that deviated, intentionally or not. The course would have been laid into the quantum computer. Computers, even powerful ones, are not omniscient. They are susceptible to not knowing what they don't know. We can delve into the computer's limitations with the programmer. She's en route. Perhaps there was a mutiny? Or the ship was hijacked. Hijacked? It would explain what we saw. <clears throat> we are aware of the video, Mr. Rice. Excellent theory. If they are not the crew, who's to say they didn't board the ship after it crashed on the planet? The planet hasn't mentioned anything. You're burying the lead. Are you saying that the planet is sentient? Yes. And you've been in contact with it? Yes. I'm saying both those things. Not me personally. The Coven. Empathic impressions mainly, but there has been some true communication. Apparently the fissure that has been retrofitted into the vessel's interdimensional drive, and to a lesser degree the navigation system itself, served as a beacon that drew the planet to it. The planet positioned itself to greet the Invictus, and the ship ended up crashing on the planet. Positioned itself? There is something rather red flag about that scenario. How would it know to come here, to this particular universe in the infinite multitude? We have a theory. If someone in this universe briefly opened a tiny portal into the universe that the binary system is from, the Invictus's entangled array would reconnect and thereby provide a homing signal. Hmm, plausible. All right. That's how it found us. But why did it come at all? Just being a good Samaritan? Its agenda is unknown to the Coven. Inside the Citadel Starbase at Corfu. Enjoying your cell? The absence of a luncheon meat smell puts it a class above what the Commander must endure. I feel blessed.
You're overestimating your importance to the project, Doctor. Do tell. What was your role in the sudden appearance of the binary system? My role? I seem positively mythological in my power. We know you opened a small tunnel into another universe, because we monitor you, and our sources tell us that the Quantum Entangled's communications array of the Invictus re-engaged briefly with coincidental timing to when you flicked the switch for what you referred to as your test run. But it wasn't a test run at all, was it? Should I be jotting this down? You seem to be throwing a lot out there. Not too long after your test run, the binary system popped into our universe, carrying the Invictus. Coincidence does not mean cause, nor does it mean guilt. I'm not playing this game with you, Doctor. If you want to know what I was up to, reverse engineer it. You saw to that impossibility. You're referring to the lab accident. Hmm, that was unfortunate, but they happen. Think about how I'm affected. All my research gone and my assistant, wh what's his name, dead or something like it somewhere. Oh, tragic. For the moment, it only feels like you're being burned alive. I have a great many interrogating tools at my disposal. You cannot possibly imagine the agony that can be inflicted on you. I hold the patent on most of them, so in fact, I can. Gentlemen, prep the doctor for transport. I'm going to carve my initials into your soul. Find it. Back in the halls of Evermore. I love this thing. <laughs> a peephole? And it is for such reasons, Mr. Jeremiah Dupre, that you were given the job of the Goddess's Watcher. What was your impression of our guests? Mr. Rice is hiding both the extent of his knowledge surrounding the Invictus and the entirety of his role. He was surprised about all I knew. There is something more. He's not completely comfortable here. Phenomenal. Each member of the coven brings their gift. Or gifts. And what of Lieutenant Parker? She has something on her mind. A secret related to duty as opposed to a personal agenda. There is a lacing of guilt. Should we be concerned? Not necessarily. Whatever it is, she's still processing. What has the trust uncovered? The lieutenant is a highly intelligent young woman. What might be of particular interest to you is that she did not pass her psychological evaluation for her entrance into the academy. Yet she is a lieutenant. By the good graces of the trust, we pulled some strings behind the scenes. To what end? To join our cause. If she is cynical about the coven, Imagine her reaction to the shadowy trust. She is desperately hoping to be proven wrong. And when that happens, she will be a welcome addition. That's an interesting leap. Any basis? Yes. The aforementioned outcome of her last psychological evaluation. It showed signs of ascension. Miss Parker bears closer scrutiny. It is telling of the diverging paths of humanity that possible ascension registers as a fail. And what of Mr. Rice? Bronson Rice is fairly high-ranking in the BGO and has developed a reputation as the unofficial fixer for the Central Council. Intriguing. Do you know the depth and breadth of the fixing that he is currently seeking to do? There is more to this than the issue of dealing with Hell's Gate. The BGO definitely wants their own to be at the retrieval of the Invictus, and we suspect that is because there was much to the voyage they did not want known. The Coven can sense that Leviathan's reach into this universe has been greatly strengthened, but we don't know the full extent. She now has a foothold? She always did. All I can say is that now it is secured. Incidents of the Mandela Effect will start to increase in frequency and scope. Remembered history will become progressively more transient in nature. 
And you are certain it is the Invictus that brought her here? Leviathan in her entirety? No, Jeremiah. An avatar of hers. That does not bode well for the BGO sending in a recovery team. The goddess must go. I suspect our Mr. Rice is well aware. Alexandra has been asked only to lead the retrieval at Corfu. There has been no mention of her salvaging the Invictus. There is no one else up to the task. Uh, let's see how events start to unfold. I'm getting a drink. Do you want one? Oh? I think we need to discuss the goddess and us. Not this again. Everyone knows. She must know. How could she not? She confuses you for a delivery man. I like to think we've gotten past that. I know you do. 